And then it was also really interesting, I think it was in the New Zealand episode where, um, sorry, I've forgotten the man's name. He was saying that he had been somewhere and there had been graves and yeah. and people had, like other other generations had lived to be really old and then it wasn't the same for younger generations. So that was so interesting. Um, what was something that you learned along the way that was really interesting or surprising? Yeah, so Sunny, that was such a remarkable, evocative memory that he shared. So they do the baby food. Um, and, yeah, that, that image of him walking for a graveyard with the headstones just with the life expectancy getting shorter and shorter and shorter with that impact of colonisation. Um, so food directly so linked just to to life. Um, I thought that was such an incredible evocative image. Um, for myself, there are so many, so many to share. Um, I really loved, gosh, there's, there's so many. I think for myself, I get to, you know, just to come back to why I started the podcast. Um, and why that question, what would a plate of food look like if Aboriginal people first owned the land? You know, that's a question that's about decolonizing a plate of food. How do you do that? Well, there are so many different groups of people around Australia doing that. So you have the Yaru Nation in uh, uh, Western Australia who have done a buyback. Um, so they had their land taken uh, to create Roebuck Plain Station and they've just bought that back, right? Um, the Banjalung people in northern New South Wales, you know, teaching that knowledge onto their children um, to a whole new generation. There is a birthing centre uh, by Dr. Professor Winita Sherwood runs in Nowra where they have a... Uh, garden with traditional plants, foods, vegetables and foods native to that area. They sell at a local market, but it's, you know, in relation to birthing and motherhood. So approaching that differently. Um and and there's and and there's lots more. So there's a lot of people answering this question in so many different ways. I think for myself, though, I went on this huge journey. Um, I spoke to, you know, not just First Nations people around the world, but African-American, um, some white men, <laughs> a whole bunch of people talking about land, food, all of these things. And what I realised was um, there was a memory that I'd taken for granted or or. <laughs> That I, that I hadn't thought about since my nan died. Um, and it was every Friday we would have dinner at her house with the family and we would sit around this little crowded table with like mismatched place mats and cutlery uh, and get Chinese food from the local Chinese restaurant down the road, so like honey chicken fried rice, that type of stuff. And um, we would all come together and we would talk about our weeks and we would laugh and then we would love each other and we would celebrate and share food. And I realised that whilst I don't know what a decolonised plate of food looks like, I know what a decolonised table looks like because even though my family haven't had a lot of freedom in where they've got to call home, we've always made home. Um and we've always created a future for another generation by practicing love through food, by sharing a meal. And I think that's incredibly important because if you can show someone that you love them, if you can make them feel valued, if they can sit down at a table and eat a meal with you and tell a story and you can laugh, I think that means you can still believe in a future. <laughs> 